actually in the screen? Yep, right at the bullseye middle. And it's recording. Don't worry. Why? Did you not smile at me? Well, I'm not ready to shoot yet. <laughs> Hey everyone, FG again. Hey, um, this is uh, actually going to be a little different. It's kind of uh, more of a commentary, I guess, than an actual video because I really don't have anything to show you. And <laughs> you might be like, okay, why are you making a video if you have nothing to show me? Well, this is a project that was done uh, before I started the YouTube channel, quite a while before that, actually. It was uh, one of my first, and uh, I, I thought that it was uh, actually quite important. Um, something that I believe that uh, Nissan made a, a vast oversight on. They did not provide a transmission temperature gauge. The Titans have one, uh, at least in certain years, I know. Uh, but unfortunately, they didn't think that it was important to give that to us. Instead, they gave us a little tiny LED, uh, at least in, in some clusters, uh, over in the side um, next to where uh, the uh, engine... Um, water temperature is and there's a tiny little LED and you might not even never notice it because it doesn't bulb test when the rest of the cluster goes through its testing sequence and right next to that tiny little LED is just a little tag that says transmission uh, over temp or transmission temp something like that anyway that that's all that they felt was necessary to uh, to gift us with <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, anybody that carries heavy loads or tows a trailer knows that that is an absolutely terrible idea. So, um, like I said, this is kind of um, a montage of stills more than anything else. But uh, you see that um, I have a picture of what I did with, with mine. Um, I did a true engine temperature and transmission temperature. And like I said, there is no transmission gauge at all, and you might be scratching your head going, well, why did you put an engine temp as well? Uh, well, anything after 2000, I believe it's 2007 and later, the engine temperature gauge that they're supplying is pretty much useless because it's not really a gauge. It's kind of an idiot light with a needle. If you've ever noticed while driving, once your engine looks like it's up to temperature, that needle never moves. It stays basically right where it is, which <laughs> is pretty much useless. Um, however, Nissan thinks that uh, pretty much most truck owners are complete and utter idiots and morons and we just need an idiot needle instead of something that actually gives us anything useful so that gauge only has three positions cold running and you just blew up your engine so i'm going to get to that one in another video now that i've gotten through that we'll get back to the to the transmission which is really the point of this video or this commentary uh, and as you can see, um, I had mentioned uh, there are both gauges there on my dash. Uh, in the next frame, you'll see uh, a temperature guide supplied by TCI Transmission, which um, basically runs down, uh, you know, what happens to uh, transmission fluid as it gets hotter and hotter. And you can see by that graph that when it gets up uh, 240s and, and over, uh, that is very, very bad. And uh, the fluid degrades very quickly. Now, I don't think that this graph is probably from the time of pure synthetic um, transmission fluid. This would be, you know, probably back um, earlier, the um, 80s, 90s, say something like that. Um, but it's still pretty valid because even if the transmission fluid itself may be able to handle a higher temperature these days, it's still not going to do anything great to your internal clutches, your O-rings, and things like that, which really haven't advanced a whole lot. So letting your transmission temperature climb is definitely not a great thing. And if that little LED ever turns on, yeah, I'm thinking you're probably in a really bad spot. So if you're one of the people like me that likes to know really what my truck is doing and not just depending on, oh, thank you. Thank you, God, Nissan. You bowed yourself and gave me some information. Hmm. So this is actually a, a pretty easy project. Um, I think mounting and, and running the wiring for the gauge is probably the hardest part. Uh, you'll see in the uh, next two little uh, slides there, uh, the autometer 
uh, temperature sender and the uh, adapter that you're going to need. So it's a 105-2259 uh, shorty temperature sensor and uh, autometer 105-2265 sender adapter, which will properly screw into the side of the transmission. Uh, when you go to use that adapter, do not use the uh, copper O-ring that it came with. Throw that away. What you're going to want to do is when you take out the test port plug, which is on the uh, passenger side of a JATCO transmission, which is what all the five-speed automatics are, those are all JATCOs, right next to where the cooler lines enter the transmission body, you'll see what looks like a bolt head. Uh, there's nothing else in that area that could be mistaken for it, so don't worry about getting it wrong. If you find something that looks like a bolt head, that's it. What you're going to do is, with the engine off, uh, just remove that. Um, you're not going to get a flood of transmission fluid. That's actually a passage that runs from one place to another. Uh, and transmission fluid goes through there under pressure. But when the engine is off, you're going to get a couple of drops, maybe, at most. Um, I did not get anything come out of mine, so I didn't even have to worry about going back and checking to see if I needed to uh, to refill any any missing volume. So what you're going to do is the, the, um, the O-ring that is on that plug, uh, take a look at it. If it's in good condition, you can reuse it. I did, and I had absolutely no trouble with it. Uh, if your truck is like maybe, you know, a 2005 and you have 300,000 miles on it, it's possible that that O-ring probably has gotten... Um, heat aged and brittle and you at, at that point probably will want to throw it away uh, if so just find an o-ring that's very similar to that uh, and you're going to want to uh, very lightly lube lubricate that o-ring uh, with transmission fluid um, or eh, even a little bit of motor oil would be fine too um, just to make sure that it does not get um, screwed back into uh, the side of the unit uh, dry um, that's a, a good way to tear an O-ring, and that will definitely cause you a leak. Uh, when I took mine off the um, original plug, it, it actually was wet, still had a little bit of transmission fluid on it, which was perfect. So I just moved it over to the adapter, uh, screwed the adapter into the side of the transmission, uh, and then took the uh, 105-2259 temperature sensor. Now, you're not going to be able to use the temperature sender that comes with the gauge. So mine is sitting around in a drawer. I'll tell you right now, it's not going to fit. It's too deep, and it will not work the adapter correctly, and you will either have a massive leak uh, or you just won't get the um, uh, the uh, proper temperature readings uh, to, to be transmitted to come through. So before you even start this project, plan on getting both of those pieces. They have the correct threads to match up with the transmission. You're not jamming anything in. This is going to thread in nice and smooth. When you do get the adapter in place and you get the sender in place, um, before you install the sender, um, go ahead and put a little bit of Teflon tape on there as you're threading that in. And one thing you need to be super sure, do not over tighten. This does not have to be rammed in there. You don't have to take a pipe wrench to it. I put it in there finger tight and I gave it, I believe, a half a turn, maybe three quarters at most and stopped. You do not want to stress these threads because they're only brass. The transmission housing is aluminum and the O-ring, well, is an O-ring. So all of those things are not going to handle over torque well at all. So I would definitely say that you'd want to be maybe slightly under torque than you would over. You're only talking about a couple foot pounds here. You do not want to wind this thing in. That is very, very important. Uh, after that, it's uh, pretty simple. Really, you just uh, take that wire um, uh, lead there on the temperature sender, um, put a, a crimped uh, ring terminal on it, and uh, run the wire up into the cab, however you choose to do that. Uh, I ran mine um, up uh, across and up next to the engine and uh, came in around on the driver's side uh, through that, um, that big uh, grommet. Uh, boot, which is um, very, very close to the uh, steering column. If, if you uh, climb underneath your dash, you'll you'll see it, and you can just make a hole through there, bring the lead in, and after that, it's just uh, basically how you would uh, hook up any other gauge. It's just uh, power, ground, and the uh, the signal wire that you just brought from here, and that's it. It's really that easy. Um, getting underneath the truck uh, might be. Uh, <laughs> 
your um, biggest uh, time involved uh, piece of the project here, uh, really. Um, when I did mine, um, I didn't even have a lift installed yet. I had uh, a, a banked, um, like a, a, a dirt, little dirt hill at the apartment I lived on. I just put the nose up that hill so that it created extra space uh, underneath the truck at the point where I needed. And I slid underneath to the transmission, um, took out that little plug, threaded in all the fitting, got the wiring run up to the top, put the gauges in, and good to go. That was it. It was actually that simple. So uh, I hope this is a uh, helpful little commentary. Um, I've provided the uh, part numbers there for you if you decide to uh, follow my lead and use autometer gauges. Um, if not, I would you know, just make sure that you have uh, a match sender and gauge uh, kit together. Okay, and speaking of mismatching, uh, the autometer gauges that I'm showing you here, um, I believe they call those a short sweep. This particular sender will not work with a long sweep. That's the one that has a needle that moves over most of its face. You're going to want to get a short sweep unless you're going to be sure that the sender you're buying uh, is going to work okay and is also uh, the short sender style. So if you start deviating, I, I really can't help you on you know what advice needs to be uh, done here. But if you follow exactly what I purchased and what I installed, uh, I can tell you that it will work fine. It's been in there in my truck here for uh, probably about three years now and uh, have had no trouble at all. And it's been great. I really, really like to know what my transmission is doing. Um, I did tow once a twin axle, probably about 4,000 something pound um, U-Haul with the uh, surge brakes. Uh, the trailer itself is 2,000 pounds empty, and uh, I'm thinking we probably had another ton of <laughs> crap uh, in the back. Uh, we towed that from Maine to, to Maryland, a distance of 596 miles, and I never saw the transmission temperature above uh, 215 degrees. And I had to run in fourth gear the entire way because I just couldn't get it to pull fifth. Didn't have the torque uh, for a rig um, at that point that heavy. Um, and, and still, the uh, trans transmission temperature was fine. So if you're thinking about doing some towing, strongly, 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 if there's no other changes you make to your truck except maybe dealing with the rear suspension, uh, you know, airbags or something like that for the extra load for your uh, tongue weight, strongly cannot emphasize enough you need to know what your transmission temperature really is, is doing, especially if you're going to be going up and down mountains. You can just roast it. And I would hate to see somebody that was uh, starting out with, like, say, even uh, some sort of a camper, and you were thinking that you were going to go out and have this great holiday, and instead of having a great holiday, you end up thousands of dollars of repairs on a burned-out transmission. Definitely where you don't want to be. So... I hope this has been helpful and uh, see you all out there. And like I always like to say, there's still a big world out there. And uh, if you haven't gotten out and uh, gotten her all dirty and muddy, well, you're not using that truck right. Until next time.